G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And in today's video, I want to share with you guys a bird that most Australians should be familiar with, but maybe not know all that much about. And that'll be this fella here, the tawny frogmouth. So stick around. So, while here in Australia, a lot of people are used to seeing these guys, the tawny frogmouth in suburban gardens and backyards, the tawny frogmouth is actually found pretty much over the entire continent of Australia. The exceptions would be way out in treeless deserts, where there's nowhere for them to roost during the day, and in the really wet rainforests, where these guys give way to their northern cousin, the Papuan frogmouth. This wide distribution, however, means that these guys in the wild are exposed to temperatures from 0 degrees Celsius all the way up to over 40 degrees Celsius which has meant these guys have had to come up with some pretty cool ways to tolerate this really wide range in temperature. During extreme heat, frogmouths will actually pant, kind of like a dog. He'll puff in air, puff it in and out, and because he's got this big wide mouth where blood vessels come right up to the surface of their skin, just like your dog's tongue, it helps cool his body temperature down. When it becomes incredibly cool, on the other hand, these guys can actually go into what we call torpor, which is kind of like a very short-term hibernation, where they can reduce their body temperature by up to 10 degrees so that they don't burn all this extra energy just trying to keep their blood warm when they're not actually doing anything. Once it starts to warm up in the day, they'll sunbathe to help bring their temperature back up, just like a reptile would, which means that they save that energy rather than heating their body to survive that extreme cold. Undoubtedly, the thing that this guy's the most famous for is his ability to camouflage. If this guy sees anything strange or sees anything coming, he freezes solid, just like he is now. Basically sitting in the fork of a tree where he just looks like a broken stump sticking out. And it's pretty easy to not spot this guy out in the bush if you're walking around. So while a lot of Australians are familiar with this guy, one of the really common misconceptions is people seem to think that this guy is an owl, just because he comes out at night time. While his common name for a lot of people might be the tawny frogmouth owl, this guy's not an owl whatsoever. He actually fits into a family of birds of what we call night jars. Usually little nocturnal birds, and these guys are the biggest members of that family. A few of the differences with this guy and an owl are his feet. Tawny frogmouths don't hunt with claws like an owl, hawks, and eagles do. So rather than big, sharp talons and gripping claws to crush or kill prey when he grabs them, this guy's got fairly soft feet. Also, rather than having a really sharp pointed beak for tearing out flesh, this guy's got a really wide mouth, which he uses for cooling himself down and to catch things like moths on the wing while he's flying at night time. Another difference with these guys and owls is their breeding habits. Owls around the world generally lay their eggs and rear their young in hollow trees where they're nice and protected. Frogmouths, on the other hand, construct a nest, like you'd imagine most birds do, in the fork of a tree out of sticks and twigs, and it's not uncommon in suburban Australia to see these fluffy baby frogmouths sticking their heads out and peering over as people walk underneath them. One of the benefits of these guys having such a wide range is generally animals with huge distributions are sort of protected by local events, so these guys are considered least concerned. They're not at any risk of extinction. But on a local basis, one of their major issues is people using insecticides and rodenticides to kill mice and rats and insects. Now, the tricky thing with this is we might poison these rats or mice or insects, and this guy goes and eats them, and it doesn't affect him straight away. Because it's very tiny amounts, it basically starts to build up in his body, and he stores it in his fat reserves. The issue is it's not until winter, when this guy starts to draw on those fat reserves, that those toxins living in his fat are metabolized and can suddenly affect and kill them. With this in mind, if you're wanting to help frogmouths in your area, a great alternative to using these poisons is to use plants in the ecosystem to your advantage. You can plant plants that either repel insects or even better, plant plants and provide habitat for things that might eat those insects you don't like to have around. As far as rats and mice, prevention is better than a cure. It's better to take away their food source, lock things up, look after the place, keep it clean, and not attract rats and mice in the first place because nobody wants to have rats and mice and creepy crawlies around but we don't want to be getting rid of this beautiful guy by getting rid of those creepy little guys. So after that, I hope you've learned a little bit more about this Australian icon. He's a really cool bird, and I'm really lucky to get to do a video with him because this guy doesn't belong to me. He's actually an educational ambassador for another demonstrator who does what I do here in South Australia, Animals Anonymous. So if you'd like to know more about frog mouths or wildlife of South Australia and maybe how you can help them, get on Animals Anonymous. You can find them on Facebook or check out their podcast, The Aussie Wildlife Show. Other than that, guys, as always, thanks for listening. Subscribe to us on YouTube or like us on Facebook, wherever you're watching our videos. And if you want to become involved and help our videos come out more regularly, check us out on Patreon, where you can contribute to our videos getting better and better every week. 
Other than that, as always, thanks for listening, guys. Be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care. <laughs>